move on to topic, or well, I guess our first official major topic. Um, we are kind of finally going to close this chapter on the TV show Obi Wan Kenobi. Thank ep- goodness. Uh, episodes five and six, the season finale. So, I mean, we don't have to exactly touch on everything about episodes five and six. We can kind of, I, I'd like to think we can kind of pick and choose, seeing, seeing as how the show's kind of it. But um, I don't know. Uh, just overall, I mean, what did you think? I mean. What did you hate? What did you like? If this anything, the show was pointless, man. Like, I, I'm not going to show too much B-roll, like I'll, because I know this is probably heavily. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll show. I don't know. I mean, there was some, definitely some missed potential. Not that I was sure exactly what they could have done with the show to necessarily make it better at this point. Like the first episode, I know we all talked about, we all liked for the most part. You know, it's just kind of revisiting the characters. I like the first two. Well, t- neither one of them really got too deep into where it was really, really going. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the problem is I never really felt like it was getting to anything of importance after a while. It was just, I mean, half the, or really the majority of the show was this big, long escort mission with uh, baby Leia. And that is not the most exciting premise for a show. Uh, it seemed like they just wanted to end up with their big battle between Obi-Wan and Vader. That was their end game. Mm-hmm. So they're like, okay, that's the show. How do we get to that point? And they had all this other stuff baked in with the Reva uh, story and then the Leia stuff. And none of that is that interesting. Um, yeah. I don't think they handled any of the characters all that well. Obi-Wan, for most of it, I know they were playing the, oh, he's, you know, an old, distraught, kind of out-of-touch Jedi. And we've seen that before and you know... Um, or was it The Last Jedi? So, mm-hmm. um, And, you know, at first I was saying that, oh, I feel like they're handling this better. I don't know. I mean, Obi-Wan didn't really do anything of worth or merit. He definitely didn't feel like Obi-Wan from back in the days. He didn't seem like he was um, uh, strategic by any means. Um, his fighting capabilities didn't really even come into play till the end. Like, he felt very much like a shadow of himself. Maybe that's what they wanted did, him to it, feel it like. It but. didn't seem like he, like... It didn't seem like he really went through anything or learned anything that would change him in any way. Like, like it, it just makes sense that, I don't know, I, I agree with you. It, it, to me, it didn't feel like he really had an arc. Yeah, it felt nobody. Like, yeah, he's in the same position that he was at the beginning. Yeah. At the end, you know what I mean? Literally, he ends up in the same place that he began. Yes. And I, I think that's yeah. the biggest problem. And that was always going to be one of the biggest problems with this show. They couldn't really do too much with any of these stories they can't kill off anybody because you have to start with vader you have to end with vader obi-wan you know has, what has to happen yeah. yeah um they're bookending it and i mean technically that was one of the issues i think with the um the prequel trilogy is you they you knew how that prequel uh, trilogy had to end right you had to have anakin turn the vader but there was a lot more room there to flesh things out tell some stories that hadn't been seen this was just so constrained there were so few episodes to really do anything and those episodes they had they focused on other stuff stuff that I don't think was of importance. People are going to argue back and forth on, you know, if Reva is a good character or the rash enough why they added her in. I don't She wasn't good, she wasn't terrible. It didn't somewhere in between. My point is it took away from the main character of the show, which should have been Obi-Wan. Most of this never I don't want to say never. It very rarely ever felt like an Obi-Wan show. The focus was placed on Leia was placed on Reva was placed on almost everybody else but Obi Wan, so he got very little, honestly, in relation screen time or at least valuable screen time where he did anything of importance. Um, and he just—I felt like he was spinning his wheels most of the time, just yeah. waiting to get to that final battle. And that's not even touching on to some of the poor decision making that uh, yeah. he was even involved in. Hiding Leia in his coat was the stupidest thing I had seen in a long time. Um, I don't know. I thought it was dumb, and then I came around and thought it was so dumb, I kind of enjoyed it. Don't, I don't know. No. It, it was, don't try it was to yeah. apologize for that. Or It was a poor... What kind of strategic sense does that make? And here's the thing. Um, Kenobi is a general. He is someone who is high-ranking, is strategic, yeah. and basically a military organization through the Jedi. You think that what is the most strategic option, is to hide this little 10-year-old girl who's wiggling around <laughs> in his jacket, and nobody in this Empire hangar is going to catch on to that? That just... He should've, he should've... He should have been on her shoulders instead. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and her like her little feet. At this like, point, underneath. I don't know. Like, just uh, Austin Powers. The show has several moments like that that don't make a whole lot of sense. It feels 
fairly contrived. Like the show is just, okay, we have to get to this moment. We have to get to this next moment. And they don't really care how they get there, no matter if then they do some weird wonky, you know, um, rationale for how they get a character from point A to point B. They just want to get to that setup. And usually the setups don't pay off, at least in my opinion. I think the problem is, is I don't know where the the transition was, but the problem is, is that Star Wars is nowadays, no, it's very dumb. Like, I just, I don't get any, like, real sci-fi vibes from it anymore. Like, there are times when, like, certain things happen where I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. Like, I feel like in, what was it? Was it The Last Jedi where they did the 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 faster than light travel through the oh, other ship? Oh, yeah, the Holdo like, that, maneuver. Like, even though it was, it was dumb, that was one of the first times I remember in a while seeing Star Wars where I'm like, Okay, that's kind of a neat sci-fi idea oh, or event. Don't get me started on that, man. That broke so much. Like I know. Lore. Here's here's my saying, thing. I've never thought of Star Wars as sci-fi. It's a fantasy to me. Like it's more fantasy. Okay. It's in a sci-fi setting, but when you think about, you have these magical wizards basically in space. Like it always felt more fantastic than it ever did sci-fi. I mean, the ships and stuff are just there as kind of, you know, a way to set up this world and this environment to make it seem, you well, know, if you, if you view it that way, then shouldn't that, shouldn't that for you allow some wiggle room for stupidity and nonsense? I give, okay. And I have given wiggle room. Or you plenty... just think it's too far. It's too, too far of the edge. Okay, there's one thing to have, like, you know, weird things they can do with their mystic but, Jedi powers, and then there's yeah. a whole second thing that you'd think these characters, intelligent characters who have shown to be intelligent, would just make stupid decisions. That's not that's not having fun with it. That is making decisions that hurts the character um, mm-hmm. and how they're set up. And here's the thing. Star Wars has always had stupid, silly stuff. This is It's not yeah, like Disney all of a sudden has made it. I mean, at its core, especially since the prequel trilogies, this has been, in many ways a kids show or kids movie uh, trilogy they sell toys that's a big focus on it i mean you go back to episode one jar jar <laughs> i mean most people hate jar jar mm-hmm. for various reasons he was comic relief and did stupid stuff but rarely did i think he broke the lore or the character development of somebody he was just this well, weird off the wall thing to to sort of defend the prequel series even though i agree they're not great i will say the one good thing about those is like you were talking about before about how we know where it has to go where it has to end yes you're right the prequel series did that as well where it you knew where it had to end you knew where characters were going to be but at least i feel like with the prequel series i feel like it was it was super entertaining like there's just there's a lot happening on screen there's some more fun happening on screen in my opinion than some of the more modern Star Wars. I just feel like it's it was just more fun. I mean, obviously everyone points at um, pod racing, and then you had the 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 arena thing in you know episode or an episode shoot boy. two, two. Yes, I was gonna say five. And we're gonna feel pretty different on this. Um, I am not the biggest friend fa- uh, fan of the prequels. I do not think they were super fun in majority. I hate episode two. I think it's the most boring movie to watch. It's, it's, um, it's bad. It's, not, it's just bad. I just find Ooh, it Water boring. They cool. focus... Huh? Waterworld look cool. Yeah. Um, but even that I thought was drawn. To me, like a lot of that got very political and sometimes a little overly serious. Um, it just dragged out with the politics and got boring to me. And episode three, I thought it was just... A little contrived. The only one I actually really liked is episode one. I guess what I mean by the prequel trilogy is doing a better job in a way is and it's not even just the movies. It's the expanded, you know, lore around those movies. Um, they introduced characters that mattered. Like in episode one, Qui-Gon, I thought was an awesome character. He's one of my favorite like Jedi mentors in the whole series. Um Aww. Darth Maul, no. awesome villain. I mean, a little one note, mm-hmm. but I know they expand upon him when you think about, um, was it the Clone Wars uh, TV show? And mm-hmm. honestly, I haven't even watched that whole thing. I feel terrible for it. Um, I'm but, the same way. I've always wanted to. But I know just that fills in so many gaps, too, of, you know, the friendship and history between uh, Obi-Wan and um, uh, Anakin that the movies don't even get into. So uh, what I get mean is that time frame, that whole segment of shows and movies and whatnot did a lot to expand the world. I mean, even though, yes, you knew where they were going to end up, they did a lot to make that journey to that point still worth it. This Mm -hmm. show, kind of connecting between Episode 3 and Episode 4, 
does nothing. Like, what does this show do or add and, that is of any fact, importance? In fact, it attempts to like redig up those same vibes and same, in, in the same style that the other oh, movies ended. It attempts to like just. I've said I think we said it off camera, but to me, the show is very redundant. There are a lot of like, and, and I guess Star Wars has always been like that. Oh, a fourth Death Star, you know what I mean? Oh, it's the fifth time it's been. Oh, back, you know what I mean? They yeah, haven't it, always it, been that way. That's been I think there's been more redundancies and callbacks for the sake of fan service in the recent years than there have been yeah, back in the original trilogy I just days. Mean, but redundant, redundancy has always been like a. A, a, a talking point when it comes to Star Wars, or that's I don't think for that, a lot of people. It is. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think in the you know recent Disney years, yes, because yeah. I mean, Force Awakens is basically a New Hope, and uh, you know, so a lot of what they've done in the past, you know, three movies and most of these TV shows, sure, there's been redundancy. If you go back to the Lucas time, I think there's far less of that. Um, so I don't want to say that redundancy is just something that's at the core of Star Wars, because I don't mm -hmm. think it really is. I mean, this show certainly has some, but my point being, there's just nothing this show does besides try to give you some fan service, introduce characters that don't really amount to a whole lot of anything. If anything, it, it impacts lore in negative ways. Like, I still go back now, it hurts. Like, they didn't even do anything to resolve it. The whole fact that Leia knows who Obi-Wan is as a kid, and not like some passing thing like, oh, I've heard of Obi-Wan. She it was her freaking savior <laughs> in this whole thing. That's not something a 10-year-old kid is going to forget. Come on, Phoenix. Han Solo talked to her and specifically told her, keep this a secret. Do you ever tell anyone that about what's Han what Solo just did? Yeah. Um, Obi-Wan. I say Han Solo. <laughs> but and I think what bothers me about it unless they really are plenty a season 2 to this which I don't really think they are and I could be wrong I have not read into it if they announced it but the point is they made no attempt to even recognize that which makes me feel like these writers didn't realize they made that mistake when they made the show because you know this show was made before they started getting all this feedback about it and nobody caught that, that was in my opinion a fairly I've, glaring I've, issue I've heard multiple rumors that like there's nothing, you're right though, there's nothing like written in sand as to what's happening. Like, there's supposed, people think there's supposed to be a season two. People think Reva's supposed to get a spinoff show. There's so many, like. What would a directions. season two do? Like, this season was pointless. What's the second one going to do? I know they had the whole thing where uh, Obi Wan found the frozen Jedi underneath the whatever, whatever, whatever it was, you know, like in the freaking Ember or Amber, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if they have any interest in touching oh, base on really, that. They really never utilized that, really. That was just that will that be up and disappeared. Yeah, I think something about that will pop up in some other show, maybe that Andor yeah. show or something like that. I don't think it's going to be another Obi-Wan show. I got a, um, I got a, I got a suggestion for a good show. Obi-Wan, okay. Obi-Wan, uh, finds a new place to live, builds a home, but then oh, I guess I'm getting this from the from the Jar Jar skit, I was going to say, but Qui-Gon won't ever leave him alone, and he just like, bothers him for the rest of his well, life. It's like a, um, it's an odd couple kind of situation, where yeah, he has to live with Qui-Gon's ghost. <laughs> I was thinking midway, I'm like, oh, that's basically the... Oh, I uh, and I'll tell you, that actually would have been, I think, one of the... That was one of the things I was hoping to see out of this show was more of Qui-Gon showing up in, you know, Ghost Jedi form and, like, training Obi-Wan to do it. Because that's actually a pretty big thing. Oh, he looked old, though. Oh, yes. Okay, and Hayden Christensen didn't try to play a 20-year-old? Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I I don't know. Like I, I feel like the stuff they could have potentially utilized, I think, would have been interesting. They barely touched on or just completely threw out the window and they just went for some basic fan service and accomplished literally nothing. The Reva story arc, I'm sorry, doesn't work for me. Like, okay, so she was a youngling and she was trying to get back at Vader, but her approach to doing it, her motivation to be mad at Obi-Wan or being mad at the Jedi, she basically went through and helped the Sith or um, the Empire kill off all these Jedi that she was supposed to be avenging by killing off Vader. Like... How is that a morally good thing for that character? And that she can just redeem know. herself at the very end just because Obi-Wan's like, oh, I'm glad you didn't kill Luke. Good job. You're, you're all cool now. No, like she was a bad person that made bad choices. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's kind of a wasted character. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll use her in something. I mean, I know people have been talking about she might show up in the um, new, oh, what is it? It's not Fallen Order. Um, what's the uh, Jedi Survivor? That's the sequel to Fallen Order? 
Yes, I think it's Survivor yeah. Star. As so I think I heard uh, she might could be a cameo in that because you know that deals with uh, the Inquisitors, the Third Sister, and stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe she'll be something in that. Which I don't mind that. I don't mind this character existing. I mind that she existed as a primary character in this show. Like, this show should have been Obi-Wan. They should have given him some real character development. Like, you could have him be the old kind of, you know, uh, begrudging Jedi at the beginning, but he had to get somewhere. And I don't feel like he... Even at the last episode, when he has his final battle, I guess he got somewhere, maybe, because, you know, he saw a glimpse of young Leia's face, and that just you know, lit up his heart. I don't know. But it didn't work for me. None of it did. Before I lose the idea, I... I guess kind of really thinking about it, I don't, again, I, I don't think the show was totally pointless. I had some, they were, I'd say I enjoyed three episodes. Which okay, is what, three don't think six. enjoyment. When, when I say pointless, I mean, it adds nothing to the I lore of the that. canon. I'm so, saying I enjoyed it, but I'm not saying, I, I agree, it didn't add anything. <laughs> Okay. okay, so, yeah, I mean, you can enjoy whatever. For those who have watched this show and have gotten something out of it where they enjoy the moments, I mean, I, yeah, the final battle with Vader and Obi-Wan, that was cool to a certain extent. Maybe, maybe But it doesn't I'm at the add point. anything. Maybe I'm at the... I've been saying for, to you for years how I'm able to disconnect Star Wars and I consider Star Wars just three movies that were made in the late 70s, early 80s, and everything else since then for me has been interesting um you know fan fan made stuff so maybe i'm at the point where i'm like i can totally disconnect i can just enjoy this for what it is and, and not if you could uh, it's fair, canon, you know? but that's not what it is like here's the thing um for those who care oh, oh, about disney considers it canon I well do. it is and i mean i can respect what you're trying to do because if it helps you enjoy the um the franchise more awesome and i love the original trilogy far more than any other aspect of star wars but what i like about a franchise like this is it grows. Continu and, continuity. Well, continuity, but you, you add more stuff to it. It grows, you learn more, and it's supposed to enrich the entire thing. It enriches the story, enriches the characters, makes moments that are coming down the line feel more impactful. So, yes, does it take away from the original trilogy? No. The original trilogy is still excellent. Okay, And if that's all you care about, sure. Does that mean that you shouldn't care about all the stuff they're adding? I don't think so. I mean, this is canon that is impact moving forward unless in 10 years disney sells off star wars or scraps their whole processes ah we're throwing everything out the window and starting from scratch again mm -hmm. and even then that's even more of a you know kicking the, <laughs> the gonads because it's just i don't know i i have i have to look at everything at some level i like yeah. to piece it all together because i like lore i like things to work and i like it to enrich characters and stuff like this matters so mm -hmm. no no i'll leave it at that I, I guess before i lose my thought again what i was refer referencing before is that even though i enjoyed aspects of it i guess the ultimate kind of um critique in my opinion towards this show is that as a whole i would say this very much feels like content filler this feels like disney looking at their their oh we got disney plus you know this feels like something that was kind of concocted a quick pushed out quick it did feel quick it which i thought was quick. weird because this i mean it's obi-wan this is like in yeah. my opinion should have been the character like okay they're really putting some effort into more so than boba fett or any of that and some of the cg was bad the writing yeah. wasn't great like uh, that was i don't know i don't get why it, this it, it felt rushed you're right though it doesn't the show in my opinion doesn't feel like when you when you name when you throw the name Obi Wan onto a TV show or movie, the show doesn't feel like it was handled like it was Obi Wan. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it should have been handled a lot better, and it it does feel kind of quick and pushed out. And then especially, it especially feels like content fodder because I actually got this idea. Well, this idea is from Red Letter Media, and those guys enjoyed it, but they also were super critical. And like a big point that one of them made is that this show is the ultimate it's just it's more proof of content filler for a subscription service because each episode kind of drags you on there's not really each up like each episode has like aspects that give you just enough to just enough to to keep you wanting to see the next one but ultimately the thing you mainly want to see the most it will not happen until the last episode so it kind of gives you a reason to keep your subscription service or keep your keep subscribed Keep tuning in just to kind of see what's going to happen and mm. that ultimately i feel like if subscription services like disney and stuff 
other services that they if they get to the point where the people that are subscribing are starting to notice that too much that's a problem you know oh I mean? man i don't disagree with that um but i mean that is how all these subscription services work right they all are trying to make sure there's enough content to keep coming back time after time that's what netflix is struggling with right now like if it wasn't for stranger mm-hmm. things coming back i think netflix would be like bottoming out right now which by the way that comes and out pe- tomorrow so oh shoot really uh- mm-hmm. Well, people complained about Stranger Things about that, too, about it being too extended, each episode too long, get to the point, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, but Stranger Things covered a lot more ground and did a lot more in its series. Like, I felt like every episode accomplished something, for the most part. I mm-hmm. did not feel like that with Obi-Wan. Like, I felt like Stranger Things and those creators, at least at this point, they have a story to tell. And regardless if you think of how good or interesting it is, there's it's moving that direction. This Never. Obi-Wan show, I felt like they just padded it with stuff just to pad it with stuff. I definitely felt, too, like there were some agendas being pushed for certain characters and stuff like that. Just, I don't know. I The more I think about this Obi-Wan show, it feels more and more like wasted potential. And for what it ends up being is a complete wash. Like, mm-hmm. if you really care about the cool parts in the show, go on YouTube. Um, look up the final scene between Vader and Obi-Wan. That's what that's people care about anyone. Yeah, that's all everyone's going to take away from this show. And that's got a few cool moments. But even that on its own, like, doesn't add anything. Like, it, it doesn't add anything. Besides, yeah. I guess, Obi-Wan being a little more, you know, he's let go of um, Vader more. Let go of, hey, um, I keep wanting to say Hayden. Let go of Anakin. He's accepted mm-hmm. that Anakin is truly dead. But here's the thing. That was my understanding at the end of episode three. Like, Obi-Wan thought Anakin was dead, right? He he left yeah, him to you, die, pretty much. It's not like I he... Would, I, would think, I would think after Anakin killing children and then burning on the ground yelling i hate you i would think that would click in obi-wan's head of like okay this guy's this guy's off the deep end and that's how i feel like if you you know had left off with only seeing obi-wan at the end of episode three or seeing it essentially yeah (laughs) or seeing at the end of this he's still in the same point like he is literally the exact same character he hasn't learned done anything new he's just older in this one this story did nothing i know at this point we're probably spinning our wheels so i won't keep saying it but that's my i think biggest critique after all this it was wasted potential that accomplished added nothing to the overall lore or canon to star wars some fan service a couple of cool moments a lot of really odd moments that in my opinion actually break canon in some ways and i don't think it's worth a watch and I like Ewan McGregor. I honestly, like, Obi-Wan, especially in the prequel trilogy, uh, is one of my favorite characters throughout that whole thing. And it's not worth it. So Yeah. And I mean, I guess Hayden kind of looking, old, like, 40 years old. Mm-mm. They should have did some <laughs> de-aging technology on that guy. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I really wish he would have said something that, like, would have been the total, like, Steve Buscemi, like, hey there, fellow fellow students, or what's that mean? <laughs> hey there, fellow Hello. kids. Fellow well, I guess what I find so odd is they put so much effort into doing like young Luke, like they've done deep fake technology to get him working in the Mandalorian and Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. So they have this young Luke Skywalker and they couldn't add a little bit of de-aging technology onto Hayden. So he doesn't literally look like a 40 year old man when he's supposed to be playing a 20 something year old guy. Like that was so jarring to me. Like I know a lot of people mm-hmm. were happy to see that throwback with uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin fighting, um, up at the uh, what, Coruscant of the Jedi Temple, yeah. that was more jarring to me than anything else because I'm like, this, there's no way this mentally as a picture can fit back into my nostalgic memory of that timeline because well, he looks so old. Well, here I am. I'm going to play Defender again. Uh, I agree in terms of how that the CGI and the decision to do that. I agree was awful. I will say what I did appreciate about that one particular aspect of that episode five is I kind of liked how they were kind of um, using that scene and that moment to kind of reflect how Vader was kind of acting towards Obi-Wan in the current time. I mean, I... The scene wasn't necessarily bad. The fact they didn't de-age him at all was. Like, Uh, that adds a jarring layer to it. Like, and it's not like... I guess I never get this. Like, Disney's not lacking for funds. That's clearly technology they have and can do. They've done it before. They've done it in Marvel movies. They've done it in Star Wars movies. I don't know if you know, but I think Disney just this last month or two 
struck a deal with Stan Lee's children, where now I he think they're going to start. Yeah, yeah. He's going to start being they can in like raise future Stan Avengers Lee movie. from the dead. Oh man, poor guy. Let him rest. Listen, guys, when the Chaz Man is dead and gone, if I have a fan base. Don't don't reuse my image. Oh, or... I'm gonna have you in like a little anime avatar above all my videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just like it's like like. I oh, don't it's know. a whole just thing. Let, Owning properties let me, let to dead, dead actors, like yeah. It, it, I mean, there's some videos out there you can probably look. Like Disney's making a whole industry out of buying up the uh, licenses to own the rights to these people, and it's pretty mm -hmm. creepy. Um, right, that, that's getting to a whole another thing, but um, yeah. I don't know. I just, I know you're trying to defend it, and I I appreciate that you enjoyed aspects of it. And I think part of it is you probably have a, a more of a fondness for the prequel trilogy than I do. Like I know you've talked about you like episode two more and episode three you really like. So I think yeah. the fact that you I got like to the prequel series to an extent. Yeah, and I think that you got to probably see some of those character interactions a little more that hit on your nostalgia may have helped you. I don't know, feel a little more accommodating to what they're trying to do in this show. For me, though, I don't have that same nostalgia. Well, even, even further beyond the original ser series, or the original trilogy, um, the prequel trilogy hit when I was like a very young young person, so I am very definitely affected by those movies um, nostalgically. Like, those movies hit, like, what, 99? I was probably like 7 or 8 when the first one came out, so, like, they well, like hit me when one I was... Like episode 1 and 2 and all that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I could be biased. You know, because of they hit me at that time. Yeah, and, and that's fair. With... Yeah, I mean nostalgia. I mean, it, it's a heck of a drug, man. So I mean, I definitely yeah. understand the power of nostalgia. Like um, for you, you had probably already seen the original trilogy before those and all that stuff. And... Yeah, I and I, I mean, I wasn't born during the original trilogy time, but I grew up watching those before you know episode one, two, and three were ever a thing. I, just I was more than me. Yeah. yeah, I was. I think it was like, like middle school, and episode one came out, so I still had some childhood nostalgia for that one. But then mm -hmm. there was such a big gap between that and episode two. I was like, I was getting out of high school when uh, episode two came out, and it just didn't hit me the same way. So I think by the time I got yeah. to the Hayden Christensen time frame. I was already over it a little bit, um, yeah. but I don't know. To each so, their own. So I did have just a couple things I wanted to mention from my notes before moving on. I thought it was kind of cool seeing Obi-Wan do his two finger point. I don't know. Part of me was like, oh, he did the thing. Yeah. With the sword, whatever, whatever his thing is. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I did th no high ground joke when Vader was above Obi Wan in the hole. I was waiting. Maybe it was a little too on the waiting, nose for him. But I was waiting for Vader to be like, for him, even for him, just to like snicker and say huh, high ground. You know what I mean? Something, mm -hmm. something small like that. I don't know. I felt like that, like you, like you were saying, it might have been too on the nose, but I don't think it was too on the nose. I felt like that was the perfect moment for. I would have appreciated that at least, just for the meme portion of it. But I'm sure uh, that would have been a huge meme. People would have loved that. But I'm sure, yeah, but I get that probably is a little too fan servicey. I mean, honestly, in retrospect, I probably would have hated that long term, but it would have been fun in the moment. I agree with that. I think it would have been more fun, but that's that's just me. Um, I uh, I guess that was actually Ian McDermott as Palpatine. I thought it was mm -hmm. a fake one, but I guess Ian came out and said, no, that was that was me. I, you know, I guess Ian and um and Liam Neeson both had the opinions that they were just like, no, if, if they're going to bring back those characters, we want to be a part of it. We don't want anyone else playing us, which is yeah. admirable. And uh, da, 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 anything else crazy? Uh, not really. I mean, I felt no connection to baby Luke. I could care less if he they did survived the fall them. on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, okay. Well, they didn't do anything with him at all. It was all about Leia, but... Yeah. Which even so Leia's character doesn't really grow or do anything. Like no. she starts out spunky, ends up spunky. So she like, gets a she gets a gun holder, like gun sash. None of the characters get anywhere. I guess the only the only character that has a real arc is Reva, and her arc isn't even all that great. But at least she has some arc where she grows and you know makes a change, and she's not even the main character. Or shouldn't be the main character to the show. So. Something about that just rubs me kind of the wrong way. Yeah, I would say if you're gonna want to watch this show, don't. I mean, I don't want to say don't. I mean, I'm, I'm sure someone will enjoy it, but I would just say if you want everything, all the good stuff, go to YouTube and type in Obi Wan show Darth Vader scenes. You, you know, can save yourself a lot of time. Like, yeah. 
it is hard for me to recommend this show. Like, I normally I'd be like, well, you know, if you already have Disney Plus and you got time and you're a Star Wars fan, sure, watch it. You might get some fun out of it. But I don't think there's enough there. There's a lot of episodes that I think there was very little to enjoy. I thought, it, if anything, it just dragged at times. And as I said, it, it doesn't add anything to the overall narrative of Star Wars. Yeah, I'm not going to keep spinning our wheels, but go no, find I'm highlights good. on YouTube. You'll be yeah, happier. Type in all the Vader scenes from this show, and you'll be happy. Yep, so I'm done. All right, guys, we're, that's it. No more. We're done with Obi Wan. Now you got to watch Mandalorian. I will talk and praise Mandalorian if you ever start back and watching that. I'll that show's worth. I'll only watch it if you're willing to talk about about them on on here. I'll watch. I, I will talk about it, Mandalorian. I know we're way way behind at this point, but that show's so it, much better. I'll talk about anything for content. I'm at that point. Anything. Okay. Watch we can that. Go back and watch, that show's we'll watch, worth it. We'll go back and watch the first season of Telly Tubbies and, and we'll talk about it. Tiddly Winky. Tiddly, well, no, was it uh, Tinky Winky? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. know. Lala, Tinky Winky. I don't know. <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs>